God, I'm glad you're here to have a couple pamphlets or something. Just feed the people. It's so much, ladies and gentlemen, and I bring these things out. Um, me and I've seen a couple more people that have shows and they just bring a lot of these things out. Of course, you're going to get people that say, you know, you're giving this and that a bad name and so forth, but I just bring it out. I just bring it out. And if you're not included in that, that's a beautiful thing. I'm not speaking on all churches. I want to put that out there. I'm not speaking about all pastors because we have some beautiful pastors. We have some beautiful churches here. We have people, um, organizations that really, really love the Lord and are really, really doing good. And and we commend them. And really, really reaching out to the community, really spreading their word, the prophetic, um, um, inside, outside, just involving everybody in the love and the, the work of the Holy Spirit is flowing. Outreach ministry all the way to other countries and, and, and church members, family members. Beautiful. We do have some churches like that that are really standing up and doing the right thing. Those are not, those are who I'm not talking about. And, and, and we just continue to just encourage each other. Now I want you to turn to, um, first Peter, first Peter. I'm going to read first Peter chapter two, verse 12 right now. And it says, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles that Whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Okay, again, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, having your conversations, keep your conversations honest. As much as possible. Okay. Um, whereas. Okay. Have your conversations on among the Gentiles. That. Whereas they speak against you as evildoers. When people speak against you. The evildoers speak against you. They may by your good works. Which they shall behold glorify God. In the day of visitation. So when the evildoers, the people speak against you and people are looking on, people are looking on. And when they look on, all they see is your good works. So what they behold, they glorify God in the day of visitation. You're glorified. No matter what the evildoers say to you, no matter what the naysayers say to you and about you no matter what's being spread those are evil doers but whoever they're telling however they're spreading however the people overall that are seeing you they don't see what the evil doers are saying they don't see what they're, they're, they're spewing on you, how of a bad person you are, are supposed to be, or your acts or works. The acts and works that these people see is all good. So they glorify you in the Lord. You know, this person over here is saying something. But when I see this person, when I saw it, when I heard from a person of a person, I see this is a good person right here. Let your works glorify. You don't have to go back if you hear anything and say, well, no, that's not true. I'm this and I'm that. Let your deeds and let your works shine because that's what's going to show. You don't even have to open your mouth. Verse 15, 15. For so is the will of God. For so is the will of God that with well-doing, with well-doing, ye may be put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. And this corresponds again. For so is the will of God that with 
well doing, if you're doing well, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing out of the Lord, that, reading along, that which, okay, I'll start from the front, from the top 15. For so is the will of God, that with well doing, ye may put to silence the ignorance of the foolish men. So, when they say these things, when they say this person is this and this person has done this and done that, and when people look on and they don't see that all of that person is all of this and all of that and all of that, then you put people to silence. And you put people to silence by your good works. You didn't have to open your mouth. You didn't have to defend yourself. Your good works does it. And people will look on and say, hmm, if she did this or he, or if he or she said this, or if he or she went this way, it's not that way right now. That person has redeemed themselves. That person has went on. Um, I get good vibes from that person. I feel the love of the, the Holy Spirit. I feel real good around that person. You know, and 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 when I tell you to go on www.praiseandprayer.org, and you really get into it, and you listen to that music, and you're calm, and that prayer is going through, and everything, you feel the Holy Spirit right there. You feel that spirit right there. That that's a good, good place to be. And so when you you're around someone and you've heard all type of things and everything, and then you're around that person and you say, hmm, I feel so good around that person. I feel the love. Well, whatever went on or whatever I heard, I I I got much love and much respect for this person. Because the the love is rolling. You see, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, by your works, by your deeds. And so I read these scriptures and, and I just tied it into everything that I spoke about today. Everything that I spoke about, about, you know, the church and, and finding that place and, and, and what was happening today and the deaths. Um, um, of Aretha Franklin and the, the suicides and, and all type of things going on, the adultery and, and the pastors being put out there and everything. Um, it's, it's out there. And I just tied that in all to say that just be on the lookout, just still have love for everybody. Encourage each other. And don't look at all of this bad is going on. Look at the good and encourage each other. Don't point the fingers. But still, you must be aware of what's going on. That's all I'm saying. Because if you're not aware, if nobody's telling you and you're walking into something and nobody told you or anything, then you're not being led correctly. And you need to watch out. You need to watch out. And God leads you. Let number one over all, God leads you. God tells you where to go. Your path is already made and straight. All the leaves and, and, and debris is brushed off that path. Now, when you go to the side of that path and you kind of get off that path, and you get a little bit on the grass and everything, that's when the attacks come. And yes, you're going to get those attached because you're attached to your family. You're attached to your, your sons, your daughters, and some things may be going on with them. So you stay prayed up, stand in the gap for your families, pray for your families and uplift. Because there's so much, ladies and gentlemen, there's so much division going on. So much division that Satan is using. Deceit, the foolishness. The folly, things are going on where, where, where people are not speaking for, for months and years at a time and don't even know why and angry and don't even know why. We still must have love for everybody and we still must pray for everybody and um, 
Because we're free. And we're loving. And we're open. We're serving God. Us. It's a good, free, flowing everything. Because he said again. That, that, that his yoke is light. His burden is easy. So what are we worried about? As I said last uh, week. Uh, what are you worried about? What are we worried about? What are we so bogged down about? And in these things we don't even have to worry about. You know. And, and, and let God. Let God lead your way. And we're so at, on on the jobs and things. Maybe you're in the wrong job. Is this where God wants you to be? And a lot of times, and, and I hear people say, I'm going full time in the ministry. I'm just here, whatever God wants to do. God's going to make a way. God's going to make a way. You're not going to be hungry. You're not going to be starved. You're not going to have money, not have money to, to put a roof over your head. God is here. God works from within the inner to the outer. He gets the inner together first so the outer can 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 do what the outer um, does. And the world is different. The world works from the outer to the inner. Oh, I must make this money. I got to do this. I got to do that. I must do this. And then I got to feed myself. See, if you put God first and he works on your inner and shows you all your qualities and everything that he put in you and everything for you to display and be the best at displaying him. He'll put you on display so that you can put him on display. See, he works from that inner outer. You got qualities. You got everything. You got gifts with a twist. You you have everything. You even have the power inside you for healing, deliverance, everything. Jesus died on that cross and gave us a salvation package. And and I speak of it all the time. You know, you got peace, inner peace, shalom. Shalom, you got prosperity and doesn't all doesn't mean all the time I got money, 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 money. Prosperity on all areas of your life. You got deliverance from temporal evil, those bad thoughts, those things. Push those out. Healing, healing, healing the health. Things like that. You have that salvation package. And when you work, you have that benefit package from your job. But it compares nothing. That's temporary. The package, the salvation package that God has is eternal forever. You see, so we, we, we must know who are we serving. It's God first and then he shall supply all things because he knows that you need things. So don't get so bogged down in, in things like that. Let God lead you. There was one girl. Um, she had a master's degree in engineering um, here in the city of Detroit. And um, she didn't like the job. She was making good money. She got married. She had one little small child. She didn't like the job. She didn't care for it. And she said, God told me, came to her. And she, she said, God told her to quit her job. She wanted to change. So she moved out to California. I don't know how she's doing now, but um, she took on another, um, went to school to be something else or something. She's out in California, and she didn't have a place to stay. She was going from hotel to hotel to hotel. And, you know, she was saying, well, I know, you know, God, you didn't bring me out here to to just go from hotel to hotel but hotel. But what she saw, what she saw out there is how people are living on Skid Row. How people are living out there, not all of California, but the part where she was at, um, where she would walk through and go to school. All the people, it's, it's an area called Skid Row, they call it Skid Row. How they were living out of boxes, how they had no toilets, how they had no restrooms, how they had no showers, how they, when she would pass by these people all of the time. And she said, God said, I want you to see. I want you to see how they're living. I want you to see what's going on. It's not time right now for you to have your permanent place. So she's among the people. And she's helping a bit. She she, she hands a little money, a little food, and little things like that. But this is where she's at in her life. 
and 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 she says that she believes God sent her there for that purpose to help 